sort of dreadlock information teamwork affair. First question this week is from Moni617 and Moni asks, question, my dreads are around two months old and in the back of my head the dreads feel gone. Is this normal or should I fix it and how? With dreadlocks there's not so much a normal because different people are going to be experiencing often very different things at the same sort of age of dreadlocks. However, if you're two months in and the dreadlocks feel like they're gone, that's not um, really a good thing. When you put in dreadlocks, it depends on the method, but if you go with something like back comb or twist and rip, the idea is you start them, set them, and forget them. Although that's maybe a slight oversimplification in that you have to still do things, you have to wash, dry, separate. But the idea is, once you've started them, that's it, you just have to sort of live with them from then on as they form. There is no guarantee, however, that they won't just wash out. You know, there's lots of factors involved, how you wash them, what you wash them with, how well they were put together initially. So you can't be certain that they won't wash out. Some people get really sort of scared when the dreadlocks become looser than how they first began, so uh, new dreadlocks will loosen up from their initial day one sort of condition. And this loosening is on and to be expected and that doesn't really count as them coming out. So you have to be certain that when you feel that they've come out, they've completely washed out. If the hair is still knotted into some sort of sectioning, so if the hair can still be parted into lumps of knotted hair, then those will over time still knot back up into the dreadlocks that you initially planned out with the sectioning. But if you go back there and find that the hair is 100% loose, uh, has no definition between where the dreadlocks originally were, then yeah, those have come out. If you find yourself in this situation, you have two choices. You can either leave that hair alone and it will dreadlock naturally. It will freeform if you give it long enough. Those hairs will interact and form new dreadlocks. But those dreadlocks will not form in the sections that you originally planned out and they will be formed via freeform so they will be unique and different and not possibly in keeping with what you planned and not in keeping with the rest of your dreads. So it depends on what you're looking for. Uh, so you can either leave the hair or you can redo it. You can go back and back home again into sections or twist and rip again into sections depending on what you went with the first time or maybe you want to try another one if you find that those fell out. So you know, you have two options. Montana Stova asks, question, how do you feel about extensions? I want my dreads about shoulder length, but I don't want to grow my hair all the way down my back. Do you feel like it's the same as your real hair journey? How do I feel about extensions and is it the same as a real hair journey? Um, I'm not really sure how to convey how I feel about extensions. When I give advice regarding extensions, it's generally pretty cautious advice. There are many many different types of extensions. You can have extensions made out of various different materials. Uh, they can be knotted up in various different ways and attached to your real hair in various different ways. And because of all these variations, it's kind of difficult for me to sort of give blanket advice because it won't be applicable to everyone watching it back. Some people have really good experiences with extensions, adding them onto even brand new dreadlocks. Some people have pretty bad experiences with extensions. It really comes down to, you know, the specifics of the extension and a lot of the time into who attached and installed the extension and how experienced they are. My feelings towards extensions are always that people should do what is best for them because I know that the results from extensions can be quite mixed. Some having great experiences, some having terrible experiences. I will often um, sort of move my advice to the cautious side and advise people to maybe take their time with it but if they're certain and they're happy and they're confident in the sort of method they're going to use with regards to the extensions then I think they should go with what is going to make them happiest as long as they're aware of all the specifics involved. Is it the same as a real hair journey? No, because it's a real hair and extension journey. Should that make any difference? Is one better than the other? Depends on who you ask, I suppose, but really, I think you should be going with the sort of journey that is going to make you the happiest, because at the end of the day, it's 
your hair journey and not someone else's so does it really matter as long as it's what's making you happy i think if you're going to start doing things to your hair to make other people happy then it's going to get really complicated brian primo asks question other than washing and separating do you do maintenances and do you find that air drying young dreads allows them to tighten better than blow drying i feel like the blow dryer acts as a straightener in a way um, other than washing or drying, do I do any maintenance? I've done a maintenance video on all the things that kind of go on with my hair during day to day and I'll leave that linked in the description because there's so many things that happen during the day to day that I feel maintain dreadlocks and help them form that don't really classify as traditional maintenance and it's not a technique that you sit down and do. But pretty much in most senses I don't do anything other than wash and dry. I don't crochet hook or palm roll or anything like that. How do I feel about blow drying young dreadlocks? Um, it's gonna depend very much on the specifics of the situation in that, you know, if someone has really thin dreadlocks and they live in somewhere that's hot and dry, then they're not gonna need to blow dry at all. They're just gonna sit outside and they will dry really quick. However, if you have thick young dreadlocks and you live somewhere that's cold and damp, then I think the balance is gonna swing in the other way and you should probably blow dry those, otherwise you will end up with them potentially smelling like a damp towel, getting mold, mildew, dread rot, and all these nasty things. I don't really think that the risk with a hair dryer is that it acts like a straightener. I know that a straightener is applying hot stuff to hair and it makes it straight but i don't really think that a hair dryer used in um, a responsible manner is going to cause too many problems for young dreadlocks i mean if you're gonna have it on full blast and cook them then yeah you're gonna damage the hair but i don't think the risk of actually damaging the structure of the dreadlock is all that high and when you balance up against potential for getting mold, mildew, dread rot, nasty stuff, then it probably balances out pretty good to use the hair dryer. But again, depends on the specifics of where you live, your dreadlocks, etc. Lenten Pebbles asks, question, if you use rubber bands on the roots methods when starting out, how long should you keep the rubber bands on for? I personally don't recommend leaving the rubber bands on for any longer than is absolutely necessary. Uh, rubber bands can be super useful when you're starting dreadlocks if you're gonna section the hair out because if you try to section a head for dreadlocks, you will know that it's kind of a nightmare with hair falling everywhere and you just want something that you can use to hold the hair, uh, group it all up and elastic bands can be used for that purpose. But beyond being used to hold the hair into sections, which is pretty much entirely on day one, I don't think you should keep the elastic bands in. I will leave a link to my elastic bands video in the description to this one, which will go into more detail. But basically elastic bands are going to restrict the movement of the hair so you can end up with dreadlock forming above and below the bands perfectly fine but the hair directly under the band is not going to be able to move, it's not going to be able to knot so it can end up uh, unknotted and thin and potentially weak. When they're on the roots of the dreadlocks they can rub against other dreadlock roots. This can form weak spots from the friction. Loose hairs can knot over the top elastic bands which means they get stuck inside the dreadlock and actually have to be cut back out again and if you use rubber bands that are made out of a specific material material that some people seem to end up with, they can sort of melt into a nasty goo in your hair and just not good. So um, I wouldn't recommend leaving rubber bands in there pretty much at all. Lostilian asks, question, I started my dreads about a week ago now, I ask myself when should I use silica, this white stuff, do you recommend it at all? I'm not sure whether you meant to put silica. Um, I thought I knew what silica was and I googled it and it is what I thought it was. Um, silica is the stuff you get in packages. So if you buy something, normally if it comes in a big box, electronics and all sorts of stuff come with um, these little white packets of silica and it brings moisture out of the package to stop it from getting damp inside the package. Uh, keeps humidity levels low. Um, these packages normally say on them, little white packages say discard, so you throw them away as soon as you receive the package because they don't want people to swallow them and stuff because it's not good for you. <laughs> it's, yeah, I would not recommend putting those on dreadlocks really. I've never heard of it being done, so maybe it's something new and out there, but um, yeah, I've never heard of that and considering how it's normally packaged when it arrives and stuff. It's not something I would particularly want to put near my hair. Those are my questions for this week. If you have a question that you would like to ask me in the Q&A video, 
style format. If you want me to answer one of your questions in a video, you can leave it down in the comment section below. Please write question at the start of your comment and it will join the queue. If you want to ask a question for me to answer immediately, but with a text comment, don't write question because if you write question, it will join the queue and it will take you know, a while for me to answer it because there's a cute. If you like this video, you found it helpful, useful, enjoyable, you can click the like button. If you'd like to see more videos from myself in the future, you can click the subscribe button. If you're looking for dreadlocks, tips, help, advice, guides, information, questions being answered, you can find all my stuff on lazydreads.com. Um, yeah, somewhere. Um, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you again next time. Farewell.